Chapter 4.4 Captain Sabueso As they walked to the back of the bar, Nika leaned over to Tobias and whispered, This is your parole officer? Not gonna lie, she's kind of turning me on. Tobias creased his eyes and looked at Nika, who continued, Eyes like a devil, smile like a villain, beautiful lips and tight hips, and that whole power trip thing? Kinda hot. I mean, if she wanted to step on me, yeah, yeah, I get it, Tobias stopped her. It ain't all that great, Nika. They followed Claire to the back of the bar. She had her own separate room in the back, covered by two sliding faux wood doors that kept their conversation private. Wooden barrels piled in the corner, a circular table awaited them, and a singular dim light dangled over it. Claire gestured for them to take a seat, and Nika was the first to help herself. Claire tapped her link. You did good, Tobias. You did very good. She flicked through screens on her link. What are you doing? Verifying her identity. Claire's link changed to a fingerprint scanner, and as she reached out for Nika's hand, Nika offered it willingly, as if exchanging pleasantries. Nika Nikolai's, she said, batted her eyes, and smiled. The light glinted off her golden canine. A pleasure. Claire did not smile back. She grabbed Nika's hand and pressed her finger to the link. Ah, guess the pleasure's all mine, Nika whispered with disappointment beneath her breath. The screen circled around Nika's fingerprint until it blinked green. Perfect. She's a match. The first vicious six down. I did what you wanted, Claire, Tobias said. So what'd you find out about the death certificate? You want to get into that already? Tobias closed his eyes and grit his teeth. I already don't want to be here, he said with suppressed rage at the tip of his tongue. So I want this to be quick. I told you, she said, as a matter of fact. I couldn't find a death certificate. And I told you. That's weird. It could have been a mistake. I doubt. His anger rose, but he tempered himself. That my daughter vanished with no death certificate while I was in jail. Wait, Nika said as the unheard third party. Lil O'Donnell's gone? Both Tobias and Claire ignored her. Claire had little more to give him. Tobias, I don't have any more info. Well, get it. I got you, Nika. Claire shook her head and begrudgingly agreed. Fine. What about Vera, then? You looking at her yet? She knows Vera, Nika said, unable to contain herself. <sighs> and I thought you were enjoying the finer things in life, Toby, but she knows your wife? Before she could continue, Tobias shoved a mask onto Nika, and it immediately dermalinked to her lips and sealed them shut. Quiet. Claire sneered. She hated when Tobias brought up Vera. Vera went off the grid when you did. No one's seen her. Tobias shook his head and threw his hands up in frustration. All right, he continued. Then do me this then. What do you know about Celeste? Starlight? Nothing since she went missing. I doubt you know nothing about anything, Claire. Why does it matter to you? Claire asked. Does this have to do with your ship hand? Lil Red? Yes. Retta. He never told Claire Lil Red's name. He specifically kept it hidden from her. She did her own sleuthing, and she knew more than she let on. The question was why Luca was after the baton. Was stars, too? Nah, it's got nothing to do with Lil Red. He distanced himself before Claire got any ideas. Forget I asked. Good. Let's keep it that way. She jerked an invisible chain, and Tobias lurched towards her. She stroked the underside of his chin and focused on his lips. You're on my leash, remember? Nika looked between them, wondering what would have happened if she wasn't there. She pulled down her mask. Should I leave you two alone? Claire smiled pulled away from Tobias, and turned to Nika. I'll be in touch. I have to send Nika off to Nexus. The comment caught Tobias off guard. To Nexus? Like the Outer Reach? Yeah, they bought us out. Stars? 
Yes. The police. Yes. They bought the police. Tobias was even more worried now. Nexus funds us, hence the bots. Guess they had to creep into the inner colony some way, Tobias muttered. I'll be in touch, Tobias. You can go. You can go was hardly a release. Scores of STARS officers waited outside. They anxiously waited, practically salivating at Tobias's bounty. Claire sent him back to the wolves to fend for himself. She loved her control over him, almost as much as Nika loved to watch. She snickered, waved Tobias off, and said, Have fun, Toby! He left Claire's back room. The doors shut behind him, and three officers were already waiting. They hung by the edge of the hall, stared as Tobias entered, and averted their gaze when he noticed. They were waiting to see if Claire came. She didn't. He turned away from them, and they followed. Without Sabueso's protection, they were emboldened. Collecting Tobias' bounty meant they'd never have to work a day in their life. They'd never have to answer to Captain Sabueso again. That was if they could catch him. Tobias followed the signs downstairs to the bathroom. The officers kept their distance, but he knew it wouldn't be for long. He disappeared into the men's room, and the officers followed. They kept their footsteps quiet and whispered between themselves. Remember, he's the Silver Fox. He got his name for a reason. Be careful. The three officers trailed Tobias downstairs. Their floating bots followed, and they flanked both sides of the bathroom door. He was a dead end inside. Tobias had nowhere to run, but Tobias was still the Silver Fox. They didn't take any chances. A bot scanned the frame of the door and checked for any traps. If it's the Silver Fox, the officer said to the others, then he's definitely setting us up for something. The bot blinked with a green light. There were no traps. The second bot expanded its chest like a riot shield, quietly pushed the door open, and the officers waited for an explosion a booby trap, anything. Nothing came. No one was inside. The three stall doors were open, the sinks were unoccupied and dry, and the urinals were empty. Where did he go? The young officer was confused. He turned to the bots and commanded them, scan for footsteps and fingerprints. A black light ejected from the bot's head and it scanned the environment. No trace. Not even a fingerprint was left behind. Did he disappear? Meanwhile, Tobias crawled out from the woman's bathroom window, held open by Alpha outside. Once he slipped through, Alpha gently closed the window shut as Tobias patted himself down and cleaned himself off. He crouched low and looked through the men's bathroom window as the officers scanned fruitlessly for Tobias's trail. <laughs> Rookies, he said under his breath, covered his face with his mask, and snuck back to his ship.